Hey guys, it's Michael from Tinker's Toy and Hobby again, and this is something that is really new to me, and I wanted to be able to quickly touch base on this. This isn't going to be as long of a video, but it's called Honor Boxes, and I'm sure you've heard of them. I know we've mentioned them in our past videos, and in our future videos, we're going to do pulls, just like we do from our normal vending locations, specifically for Honor Boxes. So, Honor Boxes, you can find somewhere from $10 a piece to $25 a piece, and it depends on, you know, where you get them. One of the best places you can get them is Vending Business Solutions. An owner of this company is Dominic Barbados, who also has a YouTube channel. We'll go ahead and put the link in that description so that you can check him out. He, he in my opinion, makes some of the best honor boxes you can get, and there's a whole lot of value doing something like this if you're putting your foot in the door. You have to start somewhere and make an entry level, and this is one of the best solutions, even more so than a general candy machine. But the great thing about these is... You know, again, we talked about margins, and we kind of focused primarily on the idea of gumball machines. And what's really good about the margins on these is you can get something in the neighborhood of Tootsie Pops, which it seems like in here is kind of the main selling, you know, idea. Well, if you go to Walmart's website, you can get these online or in person at your local Walmart. They're going to be under 10 a piece for about 70 So they're a really good price, and we'll go ahead and pull up a calculator. That way we can see what that would be. So 10 divided by 70 is the way you can math how much these are valued for. That puts them at about 14 and a half cents, a little less than that, per blow pop. So that puts you, when you sell them at about 50 cents a piece, at well over a three times margin. And after you do your donations, you know, you can still make two and a half or, you know, three times depending on what you donate. Uh, the, the thing about donations, the idea of these honor boxes is it's kind of an honor on a two-way street. So as a distributor, you being the distributor, honor kind of plays the part where you are expected to donate. You know, the honor on the other person's side, the people who are purchasing, is obviously that they're paying for them when they grab them. You make about three and a half times your money or three and a third times your money. So when you consider it, you could have up to one every three customers steal them and still make a profit. Obviously, you don't want that to happen, but your margins are high enough you can kind of afford to. This last week, we placed three honor boxes. One was at a already current location, was our Mexican restaurant. We took away the candy machine that, you know, the kids were happy with. And from what the owners of that Mexican restaurant told us when we put the toy one there, it ended up being something that kids, adults, and, you know, teenagers like but they still missed having candy and this was a way that we thought we could give back to them and still do something for the community. And it's a little easier to get in with locations when you show them something that takes up no space and is charitable. I think it really makes them feel a personal, you know, dilemma when they don't decide that, you know, they can make the space for it, which is a really great way to get your foot in the door because then over time they can trust you and maybe you can upgrade the machine. So that's one of the pros. Ideally, these are a really good way to get started. Some of our things, like I said, the Mexican restaurant, you know, a lot of people, what they try to do is use these as a foot in the door to upgrade to a bigger machine. And we actually did the opposite, where we put a machine in, but then we added this as an additional service. Then there's a couple places like our local, our local pharmacy and liquor store, where we went ahead and put one in because we didn't think that we could really get a foot in the door for a bigger machine, but it was still allowing us to make some amount of income off a business that otherwise we wouldn't have made anything from. So these are something great to consider. If you want to go ahead and put $200 out per machine and stick with gumballs, you're not going to feel like you had a big personal loss and you're going to still make something. If you want to start something smaller, I would recommend going to this website, Vending Business Solutions, and try to see what you can purchase. For the price of one gumball machine or candy machine, you could go ahead and get 10 of these charity boxes. And what we did was we took one of our local stickers for a local charitable donation and we went ahead and stuck it right on top. Ours was actually the traditional blue one. And then we put a call for assistance sticker right on the thank you logo so that people could see if, you know, it needed to be refilled, they could call us. They also have one for military, breast cancer awareness. This one's completely blank so you can kind of, you know, have creative freedom. But it's a really cheap you know, it's a cheap bundle, a vending package, if you will. And I don't think there's any reason that these shouldn't be considered machines, so to speak, or if you get them out in locations that they are looked any less as. A lot of people use them as stepping stones, but in the right spots, these can make you a lot of money and start kickstarting your business quicker. So consider your profits, consider what you purchase and what you can put in, consider who you'd like to donate to. This is a really easy way to get in with people early 
especially if you haven't been established yet and you don't have as much going for you in terms of actually showing you have any reputability at all yet because you're brand new. Another cool thing about this is you can kind of see in this picture here, the box is just empty, doesn't have the lollipops in it. Well, actually, the lollipops go in the spacer that sits right in this little cubby here, right? So when you put that spacer in, it has a bunch of holes, about 72 of them, so that you can have the lollipops sit there. Otherwise, they would just slide around like in this empty crater. But if you pull that spacer out altogether, then you have this whole box that you could do anything with. I mean, if you don't want to do lollipops, you could do like munchies crackers, you could do, you know, little packages of peanuts. I mean, you don't have to stick with lollipops. This is just what they suggest. They're not really bland. They're not like dum-dums that are really small. It wouldn't go for 50 cents, but you have more options. And then besides that, and if you don't want to really have to alter them, not that it's really altering, but if you don't want to go that route, they actually make uh, bigger honor boxes. They have different ones. And let's see if we can go ahead and find them Okay, well, I can't find any on their listings, but you can kind of look at this picture here. This little kid, he has this bigger one that they had for a dollar, and they had those. And the spacers kind of just separated the snacks. Those were definitely something you could do. I don't know if they're out of stock, or maybe they discontinued them on this specific website. But that is definitely a choice you could do even with the small ones. And another great thing about Honor Boxes is if you went that route, you can kind of look at this as jumping into an entry snack and drink machine. You could put little bottles or little, you know, pretzels or Cheez-Its in there and start selling those for a certain amount to kind of see whether it's worth putting in a snack and drink machine over maybe a claw machine. So there's kind of ways you can see, you know, well, does this cater better to candy with lollipops? Or when I put snack and drinks in here because the candy wasn't that good, did I see an increase of sales? So would this be worth a snack and drink machine? Obviously, there's going to be cons to this, even though it's low startup cost. It's not a big metal machine. It's going to wear down, you know, as much as any cardboard would. Uh, somewhere in here they said that it lasts longer. I don't know what it meant by longer, if it meant a previous version of Honor Boxes or if it just meant then your typical cardboard, but it's cardboard and if people are even remotely rough with them, it's going to be easy to bend and break and rip, but that's something you consider. You know, you may have thefts easier, you may have your machine, so to speak, not last as long as a typical one, but you're starting with much less and you can kind of determine if this is something you even want to do in the first place. I think you should. Personally, I think if you're going to do honor boxes, candy machines, you know, snack and drink machines, it really doesn't matter. You can't find as much of a semi-passive business in terms of receiving an income monthly as you can with vending. I mean, you can have dividends, you can do Amazon FBA, there's other versions, but I think this is such a good, as passive almost as it can get income. And it really doesn't matter whether you start with an honor box or candy machines or a rack or a claw machine or a snack and drink machine. Those are just different levels of the same business that is just a really good tried and true model. But if you don't have much to spend, I would suggest starting with this. And, you know, you don't have to do Tootsie Pops. That's what we do at all of our locations. Go ahead and shop around. See what you like better. It doesn't have to be lollipops. You just want to make sure that you can kind of get a feel of Am I putting out something that I can make some money in as well as give back? And if you can do that, then, you know, use creative freedom. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of insight. If you have questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Stick around if you want to and subscribe because we're going to be doing polls from our actual honor boxes specifically. You can see what kind of income they can pull from small locations because as of right now, they're not the highest foot traffic, but it'll give you an idea. And go ahead and hit that like button if this gave you any help at all.